In 1938, on the alternate worlds of Earth 2, Jason Garrick was once a college student until he accidentally inhaled a sample of heavy water vapor. As a result, he gained super speed. The man at first used his powers to become a star player on his school's football team, but after a while, decided to use his powers for good instead. Fashioning a costume based on the Roman guard Mercury and wearing a helmet from his father, a veteran of World War I, Garrick became the first Flash of the original DC Universe. Working out of Keystone City, Jay would face many villains, including his first adversaries, a group of blackmailers known as the Faultless Four, and the perpetually unsuccessful team of villains called the Three Dimwits. When a professor stole the final sample of heavy water that gave Jay his powers, the thief gained super speed abilities of his own and became a villain known as Rival. Like the Flashes who would follow in Garrick's footsteps, Jay formed a bond with this era's Green Lantern, a man by the name of Alan Scott, and both were members of the Justice Society of America. Garrick was a founding member of this team. The Society became a successful and famous crime-fighting outfit, and Jay had a remarkable career as a superhero. But when the House Un-American Activities Committee investigated the JSA for potential communist ties in 1951 and demanded the heroes reveal their secret identity, the Justice Society declined and Garrick chose to retire out of disgust for the government, marrying his longtime girlfriend Joan Williams. Jay came out of retirement in 1961 and met the Flash of another parallel world named Barry Allen and both versions of the Flash wound up inhabiting the same reality after the crisis of Infinite Earths. Thanks to being exposed to several anti-aging experiments, as well as Garrick's own power over speed, he was able to stay relatively youthful for many decades and work with the JSA all the way into the 21st century. With most of the original heroes long dead or retired, Jay, Alan Scott, and Wildcat remain the only original JSA members on a new version of the team and they began to work as mentors for their teammates and the superhero community as a whole. During the Infinity Crisis, the Speed Force, from which Jay generates his power, was apparently destroyed during a battle with Superboy Prime. Garrick was temporarily weakened as a result of this, and with most other iterations of the Flash at this point dead or out of commission, Jay resumed his role with the Justice Society of America and was eventually elected mayor of Monument Point, the city where the JSA was based in at the time. As mayor, he served with confidence and distinction and proved to be a capable leader. A new version of Jay Garrick appeared in the New 52 line of comics. Again, Jay's home lies within the world named Earth 2. This iteration of Garrick began his career as a college graduate, recently spurned by his girlfriend Joan. Jay would encounter the Roman god known as Mercury, the last survivor of his kind to fall to the might of Apocalypse and the forces of Darkseid. Seeing bravery in Garrick, the god bestowed his superior speed onto the young hero. Jay takes on the mantle of this world's Flash, and would work alongside of other heroes like Hawkgirl and Green Lantern to protect the world of Earth 2. Garrick's status as a metahuman would put him in conflict with the world army of this Earth, as well as the minions of Darkseid. Barry Allen was only 11 when his mother was murdered. His father was wrongly accused of the crime and sent to prison, where the innocent parent was tragically killed after some time. But Barry refused to ever believe that his father could be guilty. He dedicated his life to finding the true killer and this person's motives, and anyone else who has been through the same trauma as he. As a result, Allen chose a career in forensic science and found work at the Central City Police Department. Working one night late in the crime lab, a nearby rack of chemicals were hit by lightning and Alan was exposed to the altered substances. Apparently unaffected by the process, Alan cleaned up the mess and returned to work, only to find the world moving at a much slower pace than usual. This is how Barry first discovered his abilities. As a fan of comic books, Barry designed a costume and took on the name of one of his favorite characters, Jay Garrick, and thus became the Flash of this world. Barry's girlfriend, Iris West, had her adoptive father create a suit capable of withstanding his powers and could be shrunk to fit inside of a ring. As the Flash, 
Barry began his superhero career by taking on a villain known as the Turtle Man. Alan proved to be a very likable and inspiring superhero. Nearly all characters who later became associated with the Speed Force would cite Barry as an inspiration, and the second Flash was never short on close friends and allies within the superhero community. Barry was a founding member of the Justice League and quickly established a strong bond with fellow member Hal Jordan. Though the Flash was primarily focused on protecting Central City, he also built a cosmic treadmill to allow him to safely visit other universes and time periods. Barry would go on to meet what he once thought was his fictional hero, Jay Garrick, after accidentally finding himself in Earth 2. Together, they foiled villains operating within Keystone City, and would work together occasionally in the future. Alan faced many foes in his career as a superhero. He gained an arch nemesis in the form of Professor Zoom, who would go on to kill Barry's soon-to-be wife, Iris. When he later became engaged a second time to a girl named Fiona Webb, Zoom attacked the young girl in an attempt to kill Alan's second bride-to-be. Barry lost it during this attack and killed Zoom while stopping the assault on Fiona. Alan was put on trial for manslaughter as a result and dismissed from the Justice League for breaking the no-kill rule. In the end, Barry flees the trial after the reverse flash tampers with the outcome and retires when he discovers Iris is alive and well, living a thousand years in the future. He travels to the 30th century, and having recently altered his facial features with plastic surgery, begins a new life with the woman he once thought lost. Iris was impregnated by Barry, and had two children named Don and Don Allen, who later became known as the Tornado Twins, and Don would go on to have Bart Allen as a son. In the future, Barry was surprised to find natural disasters occurring in ways that should have been prevented by existing technologies. Upon further investigation, it was discovered that reality was collapsing due to the actions of the Anti-Monitor. Barry was captured by the monstrous enemy and mentally tortured by his servant, a man known as Psycho Pirate. Alan manages to escape from the villain's custody and destroys the Anti-Monitor's Anti-Matter cannon. In doing so, he managed to save what was left of the multiverse, but at a great cost. Alan permanently entered the Speed Force, leaving behind no remains save his costume and ring. Presumed dead for years, Barry Allen was replaced by Wally West for some time. However, Barry would appear on occasion, including during a battle against Superboy Prime. 23 years after Barry's death, Allen is resurrected by unknown means during an event known as the Final Crisis. Teaming up with Wally West and Jay Garrick, the Flashes worked together and helped defeat the mighty Darkseid. Upon his return to life, Barry began to transform into the zombie-like Black Flash, and Professor Zoom is revealed to have been behind this, as well as most of the other important events in Alan's life. The murder of his mother, Barry's resurrection, and a great deal of other traumatic events are all the result of Zoom's machinations. With the help of several other speedster heroes in the DC Universe, Zoom is defeated and Alan is able to return to normal and celebrate his resurrection in peace. Later, Barry would meet with his old friend Hal Jordan at Bruce Wayne's grave, and the two would discuss their mutual deaths and recent resurrections. Reflecting on the deaths of many close friends and relatives, the two depart with the hope of a brighter tomorrow. Instead, the blackest night begins, and with the rise of the Black Lantern Corps, many of the dead return as gruesome, deadly, and zombified versions of their former selves. After defeating the Black Lantern sent after him, Barry and Wally raced around the world to warn everybody about the rise of this sinister new army. Barry had a brief conversation with the Black Lantern version of Professor Zoom, and provides assistance to Gorilla City, before Alan is nearly turned into a Black Lantern himself. In the midst of this crisis, the other Lantern Corps deputized new members within their ranks, and Barry is temporarily made into a member of the Blue Lantern Corps. With his new power ring, Barry fought against and helped defeat Necron and his Black Lanterns, and was briefly turned into a White Lantern in the process. With the Black Lanterns defeated, Barry returned to his old life, and helps defeat his old enemies, including longtime foes such as the Rogues and Gorilla Grodd, as well as lesser known villains like the Top. The latter is notable as the villain inhabits the body of Barry's father, and because of this, 
Alan has taken extreme measures in the past to defeat the top. During this time period while working with Hal Jordan, Barry was also briefly possessed by the embodiment of fear known as Parallax, but is rescued by the entity that represents compassion known as Proselyte. One day, Barry wakes up in a universe completely different from the one he calls home. Most of his friends and allies are gone, and Barry himself is completely depowered. He seeks out Batman only to find out that Bruce died a long time ago instead of his parents, driving Thomas Wayne instead of Bruce Wayne into becoming this universe's Batman. After convincing Thomas that he means no harm, and that the world is not the way it should be, the two work together to recreate the events that gave Alan his powers in the first place. This does not appear to go well, as Alan is badly burned and knocked unconscious after being hit by lightning. In spite of these injuries and no apparent change in Barry's abilities, when Alan wakes up, he insists on trying it again. This time, when Barry is hit by lightning, the man becomes the Flash once more, and together, they form an alliance with the few existing heroes of this world and work together to try and stop the changes in this universe. As the world begins to descend into complete chaos, Barry is confronted by none other than Professor Zoom, who explains that Barry himself is the cause of the alternate timeline, when he absorbed the power of the Speed Force. As Zoom attempts to kill Barry once and for all, the Professor is instead killed by Thomas Wayne. Thomas then sends Alan to restore the timeline to its original state. Barry complies, but before he does so, he visits his mother in the past before she is killed. As he restores the timeline to its original form, he instead sees three timelines and is informed by an unknown person that these timelines must be merged in order for the universe to be ready for an upcoming cataclysm. Barry watches as the three timelines merge into one, and the DC Universe becomes the New 52. In the New Universe, Barry's origins remained largely the same, with a few additions and changes. Barry was raised by a police officer named Daryl Fry in this world, and the man proved to be important in getting Alan interested in forensic science. Once employed with the police, Barry gets frustrated one night at his inability to exonerate his father. Barry throws a machine out a window, causing Alan to be hit by lightning and doused in chemicals. This event established a connection with the Speed Force, making him the Flash once again. In the new continuity, the marriage between Iris West and Barry never happened, and he instead is dating a co-worker named Patty Spivet. Unlike his original counterpart, Barry has yet to fully understand his powers, nor does he have total control over them. Barry would go on to face many new versions of his former enemies, including the Rogues, Gorilla Grodd, and the mysterious Reverse Flash. This alternate Flash proves to be a rather devastating enemy. Revealed to be Iris' brother Daniel West, he claims he is here from the future to change history. Like the original timeline, Barry has become a good friend of Hal Jordan, and the Speedster is part of the New 52 Justice League after working with the other heroes to defeat the armies of Darkseid. Wally West is the nephew of Iris West, a longtime love interest of Barry Allen. The young West grew up in a small town called Blue Valley, raised by emotionally distant parents. Longing for a better life in Central City, Wally has come to idealize the Flash and dreamed of one day meeting the superhero. One summer, Wally visited Iris, the only relative he was close to, where he met Barry Allen for the first time. At first, West finds Barry to be boring until Alan offers to let the young man meet his hero, the Flash. In Barry's lab, the Flash uses his superpowers to visit the young man without revealing Barry's identity. Thrilled, West learns about how the Flash got his powers, when suddenly, a bolt of lightning struck a rack of chemicals, exposing Wally to the exact same conditions that gave Barry his powers. Sure enough, this empowers Wally, giving the young man a connection to the Speed Force, just as it had done for Barry. This coincidence was later discovered to be the result of the Speed Force deliberately empowering both of these characters for its own ambiguous purpose. With Wally given the same abilities as the Flash, Barry reveals his identity to the boy, and the two formed a partnership with one another. West became Alan's sidekick Kid Flash, and got his own costume as part of a strategic decision during one battle. 
working at Barry's side, Wally soon established himself as a well-respected hero of his own. Within a few years, Wally met Dick Grayson and Aqualot, and they teamed up together to fight the villain, Mr. Twister. The young heroes were victorious, and when they were together again alongside Wonder Girl, the four decided to form the Team Titans together. Kid Flash would work with the team as well as sustaining his existing partnership with Barry. Wally would work with the Titans through two iterations of the team, and help defeat a powerful demon called Trigon. However, it was discovered that his fellow teammate Raven had manipulated Kid Flash's emotions to keep him on the team, leading Wes to feel uncomfortable remaining involved with the group. With news that his powers were beginning to rapidly age the boy's body, he opts to retire and focus on college at Blue Valley. Wes would frequently give up being a superhero throughout his career. Though often this was due to tragic events or extenuating circumstances, it also was because Wally was exposed to the Speed Force at a younger age than Barry, causing the boy to undergo tremendous pain during adolescence. Wally did not return to his role as Kid Flash and focused on school as he planned, but when Barry Allen sacrificed himself to save the known multiverse, West found himself inspired once more. No longer a child, but also not rapidly aging anymore, West took up Barry's old costume and identity, becoming the third person to call himself the Flash, and choosing to operate largely within Keystone City. However, the events leading to Barry's death and the apparent destruction of the Speed Force meant that Wally would never be quite as powerful as his predecessor during this time period. West was largely successful as a superhero, but his personal life suffered as the result of his new role. He met Bart Allen during this time period, and even enjoyed wealth for a brief time after winning the lottery, only to lose everything. Wally also took Barry's place on the Justice League, where he met Kyle Rayner. The two at first did not get along, with Wally questioning Kyle's qualifications and the ability to follow in his old friend Hal Jordan's footsteps. But Kyle quickly proved himself, and, following the path of their predecessors, the two became good friends. As the new Flash, Wally came into conflict with many enemies, including the Black Flash, Professor Zoom, and even Superboy Prime. West would also encounter the longtime enemies of the Flash, known as the Rogues during this time period, and also chose to marry his longtime girlfriend, Linda Park. As a result of the events of Infinite Crisis, Wally was content with passing the mantle of the Flash on to Bart Allen. For a time, Wally retired once again living a life in an alternate reality with his new family, only to be later repowered and returned along with his family to the DC Universe by members of the Legion of Superheroes. Wally returns to service as the Flash and is even reunited with fellow members of the Teen Titans to face Trigon once more. Though Wally had encountered Barry multiple times since the latter's death due to the nature of their time-spanning connection with the Speed Force, Alan and West were formally reunited during the events of Final Crisis. Together, the two helped defeat Darkseid and save the Earth once more. With Barry returned, the two would later work together again to warn others of the invading Black Lantern Corps, and Wally helped defeat the invading Undead Army. The new 52 Wally West appears in the current Flash series. Though Wally is biracial in this universe, he is still Iris West's nephew, and the young man has lost both his parents by the time of this introduction. Instead of idolizing the Flash, Wally blames him for the events of Forever Evil, and for jailing his uncle, who is the Reverse Flash. This version of Wally has yet to be exposed to the Speed Force. However, he was given powers during an alternate future storyline, which sadly led to his untimely death. Bart Allen was born in the 30th century. Thanks to the complicated nature of time travel, Bart is the grandson of Barry Allen and Iris West, as well as the descendant of Flash villains such as Cobalt Blue and Professor Zoom. Bart was born with his grandfather's abilities, but it left him with an incredible metabolism and the young child aged rapidly as a result of this. By the time Bart was chronologically only two years old, he had the body and mind of a 12 year old. Not wanting Bart to live and die in an unnaturally short life, but lacking any means to fix the problem, 
Iris West took Bart to the past, where he met his relative Wally in order to learn control over his speed. Finding the idea of calling himself Kid Flash silly, Bart chose the codename Impulse instead and worked with Wally to control his own speed. Bart became a founding member of the Young Justice team and, following the group's disillusion, he joined the Teen Titans as well. During a battle with Deathstroke, Bart's knee was badly injured and the young man was forced to replace it with an artificial one. During his recovery, Bart reinvented himself as Kid Flash and eventually learned to use his replacement knee without it meaningfully affecting his top speeds. Bart would later join Jay Garrick and Wally West in combating a raging Superboy Prime. As a result of this conflict, Bart was aged by four years while operating within an unknown dimension. Temporarily depowered, Bart spent the next year in retirement, working in Keystone City and ignoring his former life as a superhero. However, his connection to the Speed Force was not severed, and with encouragement and help by Star Labs, Bart was convinced to take on the mantle of the Flash, becoming the fourth person to take this name. Alan opted for a fresh start, moving to Los Angeles and getting a job in forensics at their police department. Like Barry and Wally before him, Bart came into conflict with the Rogues. Bart was triumphant against these longtime enemies of the Flash, but was sadly forced to sacrifice himself to save the city from being destroyed. Though a touching funeral was held for Alan, during which his secret identity was revealed, it did not take long for the Legion of Superheroes to resurrect Bart using a lightning rod. For some reason, Bart was restored as a teenager, and he returned to his old role as Kid Flash once more. Along with Barry, Wally, Jay, and others connected to the Speed Force, Bart was instrumental in defeating Professor Zoom, protecting the entire Flash family from the villain's time travel based attacks. He also assisted Barry and Wally during the Blackest Night event, although his previous death meant that Bart was briefly turned into a Black Lantern until he was saved by his grandfather. After this event, Bart returned to the Teen Titans, rescuing a young hero named Static and defeating a superpowered gang member named Holocaust. He also saved Selina Kyle from members of the League of Assassins at the behest of his longtime friend, Tim Drake cheerfully referring to this event as the best day of his life. Bart also appears in the New 52 line of comics. This version of Alan is also from the future, but is not connected to the Speed Force like his original counterpart. Instead, he was sent to the past as part of a futuristic version of the Witness Protection Program. Bart's real name is Bar Tor, and he was put in protection while he waits to stand trial after being accused of working with terrorist forces. Bart seeks redemption for his actions, and he was sent to the past to do so while he waits for the hearing. Dubbing himself Kid Flash, Bart joins the Teen Titans and works together with the young heroes to protect the innocent. Other versions of The Flash have appeared within and outside of comic books. This includes Tanaka Rei, a Japanese man who gained the powers of super speed and was inspired by comics featuring Barry Allen into becoming The Flash of Earth D. A woman named Leah Nelson also took up the name of The Flash in DC's Tangent Reality. She is actually able to move faster than the speed of light, something the mainstream versions of The Flash are rarely able to do without becoming trapped in the speed force. A woman named Green Lightning, possessing the powers and genealogy of both Kyle Rayner and Wally West, has also appeared in the comics. Jesse Chambers is the anime-themed version of The Flash, who appeared in the Ame Kami comic line. There was also an anthropomorphic turtle known as The Crash, who had powers and an origin similar to that of Barry Allen. A woman named Danica Williams is also shown to take Wally West's place in the future, following the events of Batman Beyond. Finally, the four main versions of The Flash have appeared in both live-action and animated television series, music, and video games. The Flash made his first appearance on film in the Lego movie, and he is slated to appear in the live-action film set to be released in 2018.
all versions of the Flash are generally considered to have a connection to the Speed Force, giving them special abilities and powers. Depending on the character and circumstance, the strength of this connection varies, as does the Flash's speed and strengths with it. The most obvious expression of this connection is a vastly improved speed. All versions of the Flash can move, think, and react at a vastly improved rate compared to that of a normal human. Under ideal conditions, this improved speed approaches levels comparable to light itself. This power can be expressed in a great deal of ways. For example, one can spin quickly enough to create a powerful human tornado, or hit an enemy with a staggering degree of momentum and force. The Flash radiates a speed force aura, which is able to absorb kinetic energy and protect those traveling at high speeds from the effects of inertia, friction, and particles in the air. The exact nature of this connection between the Speed Force and the Flash has not been ever explained very well, but it seems to represent a conscious expression of velocity itself. Or it's just a strange place within the DC Universe somehow connected to the Source Wall. It really depends on who is writing the story and when. Though most writers and people are too afraid of fans to say this, it has been established in DC canon that the Flash is much faster than Superman. According to Barry, most races between these two that ends in draws are the result of the Flash humoring Superman out of pity or in an effort to raise money for charity. When pushed, Superman has been shown to be incapable of keeping up with the Flash. Speedsters in the DC Universe can also read and process information much more efficiently than normal humans giving them the ability to make a wide variety of futuristic devices as well as conferring an immunity to telepathic influence. The Flash has claimed in the past that he is able to process thoughts within less than one quintillionth of a second, but as this is the amount of time light takes to travel the distance of three atoms, it is highly unlikely that this is true, as it would put his brain's processing speed at a level greater than the speed of light, something not only impossible even within the DC Universe, but also in congregus with how the brain functions. Regardless, the Flash is able to calculate consequences to several different actions extremely quickly, giving him a near precognitive ability to predict future events, especially during combat. They are also able to communicate with other speedsters at a much faster rate than is intelligible for those without enhanced speed of their own, something that the Flash amusingly has a habit of doing when he gets too excited. All versions of the Flash have superhuman endurance, allowing them to run incredible distances or complete tedious tasks within a blink of an eye. Versions of the Flash with more advanced control over their powers can also vibrate so quickly that they pass through solid surfaces, and even have used this ability to travel through time or turn invisible. If the Flash is familiar enough with the properties of the Speed Force, they can lend and borrow the power of their enhanced speed as well. All speedsters heal more rapidly than the average human thanks to a much faster metabolism they possess. Without proper control over this ability, they will age rapidly. But with proper control, this process can actually be reversed, as Jay Garrick has used his enhanced speed to somehow slow the aging process to a near halt. By the time Garrick was nearly 90 years old, he had the appearance and health of a 50-year-old man. The Flash suit is specifically designed to be immune to the effects of friction, and can be stored within a ring. Unsurprisingly, the hero can get into uniform in less than a second. The Flash also possesses a special earpiece that lets him communicate even when running at speeds greater than that of sound itself. This device also allows the Flash to avoid running at speeds that would damage his surroundings or the space-time continuum. Hello and welcome to Comic Island. My name is Arden, and this is my origins and bios for the Four Flashes. So, after navigating through DC's dense and complicated history full of retcons and rewrites and changes in continuity, uh, I managed to put together a nice bio for the Four Flashes. Hopefully you guys really enjoyed it. It was actually, in spite of all the difficulty, it was really fun to go over the various versions of the Flash, and I did learn quite a bit about, like, this family of characters, so it was totally worth it. Uh, it's a popular hero and one that I've always liked. Uh, being relatively younger, the Flash that I knew and grew up with was Wally West from the, uh, Justice League cartoons of the early 2000s. Uh, but all four of these characters were pretty compelling, and they all had their own little, like, noteworthy niches and kind of 
something to set them apart from the other flashes. So it was a really cool and uh, enjoyable to go through these and learn about the different flashes. In terms of recommendations, there are plenty of great choices out there for you. I love a lot of Flash's comic runs. Uh, the classic Golden Age and Silver Age runs with uh, Jay Garrick and Barry Allen, respectively, were really cool. Uh, they get a little repetitive after a while, but they're a lot of fun. Uh, Jeff Johns also had a really nice run with Wally West in the early 2000s that I enjoyed quite a bit when going through this stuff. Uh, in spite of the problems, I also really liked Flashpoint and Black as Night. They were really fun to read. Like I said, there are problems, but it was uh, worth doing and enjoyable overall. Uh, I'm personally not much of a fan of the current uh, New 52 Flash run. I've talked to some of you on Twitter who like it, and I get it. Like it, it, It's not the worst DC title out there by far, but it's just not my favorite. I do really like the TV series on right now, though. I've been really impressed by that. I love the stuff they're putting in with the various villains, and, like, Gorilla Grodd looked great from what I've seen of him. I haven't watched a lot of the TV series, but from what I've seen, it's definitely worth checking out. It was a lot of fun. And that's all I really have to say on these guys. All four iterations of The Flash are good fun, and the hero is a very vital part of the DC family. Uh, they add a lot, and they're all well-meaning, likable characters that have each rightfully earned a very loyal fan base, which is just great. So let me know in the comments section what other heroes you'd like to see me cover in future videos. Uh, this video covers a few different requests we've had for Impulse, Barry Allen, Wally West, and I threw Jay Garrick in as well. So we're always looking for new uh, requests and other ideas. We do have a pretty big substantial to-do list and we kind of just work through them based on mood and opinion as best we can. Uh, but we will get through them uh, over time for sure, so feel free to leave uh, your requests in the comments section. Uh, if you'd like to see all the origins and bios Joey and I have made, you should check out our website. Uh, we also have a Facebook and Twitter page if you'd like to stay updated on the goings-on with our channel. And finally, don't forget to like, subscribe, and keep reading comics. Thank you.